All right, Tube. The easy part's done. <laughs> the couch, the dinette area, and the fridge are pretty much in. I have yet to figure out, let's see. I have yet to figure out what I'm gonna do with the couch. Stay. Basically, I'm gonna have a back that will turn into part of the bed, and I have this lower part that's gonna hinge up so I can get access below. But somehow I have to figure out how to get that piece attached to here so when it folds out, there's a cushion here and a cushion there for sleeping. That I have to figure out, but it's built, and I'll dress it out. The dinette is built, and basically it needs a couple cushions and some seating, and that's pretty much done. Obviously one here, and it looks like they're really wide, but I'll have a six inch cushion on the back side, so it knocks this down to about a 16 inch seating area. Uh, it's a little snuggy, but for a little breakfast nook, it'll work great. And then the other one is the fridge slash microwave combo area. And obviously the fridge is in, not wired yet, but lovely. Uh, it's just tied in with one little screw for now. I still have a little bit of work to do, but she's in, the microwave sits on top of it, and I'll have a little gap above the microwave for who knows what. The bugger is what's left. It's the kitchen counter and cabinets. And basically it's gonna bump out four inches from the fridge. And the reason being is this guy, <laughs> is like a head banger. If I'm trying to get to the sink, which is gonna be right here, I wanna pull the sink forward this way, away from this edge. So I'm bumping the kitchen counter four inches out and cabinets four inches out. And I also have to accommodate for the window trim, which is gonna be about an inch and a half, two inches out from that, which is at the exact height of the countertop. So I've gotta figure that out, bump this out, and then if you look down here, the kitchen profile goes from here to there and then bumps out for the cooktops to there, goes to there and then back. So I have a little peninsula that will hang over the slide out right here and I'll have a double cooktop here and a single cooktop here. So I'm planning all the metal out and cutting this and trying to get this together. So I've been cutting, now I'm going to start welding. And here's what I have, is I have my pieces numbered and I've drawn out, if you look, I've had to watch myself. So I've drawn my dimensions and I've actually highlighted like the long legs. Um, and so I don't forget that the shorter legs, so I don't forget the shorter legs are actually between, like which ones are between which legs and which ones run long so I get the numbers right. And I think there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces with eight pieces and a funky shape. I'm hoping it goes together right. So let's see how this goes, too. Oh, well, it took a little finagling and I missed a couple things. And that's why I had the drawing. I actually had this guy beyond, like, reversed. This was set back and this was over. And when I started putting the whole thing together, I was off here by an inch. And then I also miscalculated this one by an inch because I went off of my old numbers. But it's square. That's the way it sits. Basically, my kitchen sink is in the middle, kind of down there. I have a cooktop sitting here and then another cooktop sitting here. And that's the countertop. So we're going to tack it in place, bring it in the rig, and see if it fits. Kind of exciting. So round two. I'll show you the first one. It went in, it's set up, it fits. So I know my numbers are good. So I've framed everything up, locked them into place, squared my corners over here so I'm good to go. Gonna weld this up and I'm actually, since I'm at the bottom, since this whole area here is floating, I wanna give this a little more support. So I'm running cross members here and here 
to tie into the slide out. There will be another one there and there that tie into the slide out to give it support from tipping, to give it support from tipping because it's going to have legs. This top piece is going to have legs that come down from here down to the bottom and the bottom rail obviously floats four inches off the floor which provides my toe kick. So to keep all this in place, I'll eventually put a wheel down here, I think, to carry the weight. But uh, to get this to kind of stabilize, I'm running the cross members all the way back and tying them into the slide out. Unlikely that it will go anywhere. So first one's in, pretty happy with it. That's the layout of the kitchen counter. Like I said, I have a two burner cooktop here, a single cooktop here, kitchen sink here, little work area, microwave, hoo -ah! Coming along a little bit, Tube. Hopefully by the end of today, we have some down legs and the framing's all set for the kitchen and I can start working on some wiring and plumbing because guess what's next, baby? <laughs> That's right. These bad boys are coming to town. In the next week, I'm getting this set up and these guys. And within a week or so, I should have power running off the batteries and the solar. Excited. Yeah, running power into the rig. Portable setup is sweet. Absolutely sweet. Because what I can do <laughs> is finish out my cabinets. So that is starting to look a little more like a cabinet. Obviously this is a wall. I'm gonna have a set of drawers, I think, in there. I'll have a, a divider right there and a set of doors there. Another door here with like a pantry pullout, I think. Still haven't figured out how I'm building that, but stepping back from the bedroom, that's the look of the kitchen. It's a little snug, but it's a house on wheels. It's supposed to be. You can get through easy enough. There's probably just shy or just over two feet right there. And it's not bad. The toe kick worked out great. So I can actually put my toes underneath and I can get to about where I'm right here and I can work on the sink right here. So that's gonna work out absolutely fantastic. Always a state of chaos, always a state of chaos. I don't think we would have it any other way. So an up to date, almost finished timeline on the kitchen, the couch and the dinette. We'll start over here in the kitchen. Obviously I've pretty well finished up on the framing and I started putting in some substructure for the countertop. Uh, the fridge obviously sits in there and it's been on the road trip, so it's done very well. The kitchen has changed slightly from the original plan. I was going to put a pantry down here and what works out really well, come to find out, are two garbage cans. So I've put in drawer slides so I can slide the two trash cans, the recycling bin and the trash can in and out. So that has changed. I've also decided that in the... Under the sink, I'm gonna put one door. It'll just be one large door just to make accessing under the sink a bit easier. I have my subfloor in, getting ready for to finish that and start finishing the walls. Uh, I was originally gonna put drawers on this side and that would've worked great, but I ended up getting more space out of putting drawers on this side. So I have my, ugh, Full extension drawer slides mounted. I have all the framing done for the drawers. I have one, two, three drawers on this side, one on this side, and that gives me enough space below for all the plumbing and wiring to kind of move around under the drawer when it's uh, in and mounted. I haven't started building these drawers yet, but I have on the other side, and I'll show you that here in a second. This is actually a drawer face, and I'll show you that in a second. What's worked out really well is pulling the kitchen about four inches out from the slide out uh, keeps my head from banging on this thing for the most part 
when I'm doing dishes. So that worked out really, really well. Obviously for the counter, the substrate is in already. I have my cutouts for the cooktops and the sink, obviously. I have a temp bar top in place. Uh, we'll start over here in the dinette. I have the framing done and I have the platforms for the cushions, which are these guys. And again, these are just the six mil alu coil. And eventually I'm gonna hinge them back there so I can get access underneath. But you can see I also have my laminate down on the floor. So that's getting ready for flooring. Uh, something else that has changed. Well, the bed has some actuators which hold it in place because there's no weight on top of the bed. So it kind of <laughs> lifts itself up, but that works out great. Um, but with the bed, originally I had the bed cut or the bed actually going to here and I ended up cutting a notch out of the bed to miss this guy, which worked out great uh, for two reasons. One, the mattress actually fits now from edge to edge. So when you're sitting on the edge of the mattress, you don't have an extra three inches. You have to get your legs passed on the bed. So that works out great. And the cutout gets me around this backrest for the dinette. But what I did notice as we were driving across country, it is a pain to climb over this if you have to come back to use the bathroom or get food or whatever. So what I've done is I've actually installed some all thread, which fits perfect in the holes. And that thing just drops into place. So when we're traveling, we can pull the back out, set it down and crawling across this thing will be effortless, which will be nice. You can see the new addition on the couch is below. I changed some of that from what originally was gonna transpire. Uh, the couch actually now will fold out and down. I have another leg over there that goes down, but basically the couch opens up into a double bed, which is awesome. The back cushion and the bottom cushion just slide out and set into place. So that works out great. also have actuators or gas shocks on the couch which is awesome and if you look inside oh baby um, I have actually built some drawers and they work great they're soft closed drawers and it's taken a little while to figure out how I wanted to build these and I'll go into that in probably another video uh, but those are in and I'm really happy with those four drawers underneath the couch because this way I don't have to lift the couch up to get access to the drawers. Uh, so that's super nice. Another change is the way the closet set up. Originally I was going to have the closet access from the front side um, so I could hang clothes and coats and things. And to take advantage of space and utilize it a little bit better. I've actually installed a couple drawers and this is a pot drawer or a boot drawer. I haven't figured that out yet. Um, 25 inches deep, I think it's 16 inches wide, eight inches tall, so that's awesome. And then one above it. In the closet area, what I'm gonna do is the area from here back is gonna have a door here that opens up and that's gonna be a hanging closet. And then on the front side, I'm gonna have another door here that opens up and this little shallow area right here, this little area right here, this four or five inches is gonna have shelves in it and that's gonna serve as a little bit of a pantry. So there's the update on the kitchen, dining, living area framing. I am nearly done with all the structural framing, if not done, and I am currently working on the drawers and I think we're gonna move on to electrical after this. So there's the update tube. That's what it looks like. Slow but sure in the Rocky Mountain winter because it's cold outside. I think it's negative one right now. It's been down to negative seven. Um, this thing's been working great, but there's the update. Stay tuned for next week. I think we're doing electrical, I think. Later, too.